Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another Oh, wow! moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Hey, are you ready? For what? Are you ready for another Mr. O? You didn't forget, did you? Of uh, yeah. course not, just mm -hmm. give me a minute, I'll be right down. All right. Absolutely not. I am totally ready for this episode. Then what's with all this kitchen stuff? What are we supposed to do with this? Are you kidding me? Some of the best chemistry in the world happens in the kitchen. In fact, we're going to go into some serious chemistry today. But first, we got to do the experiment. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. You'll need milk, bowls, food coloring, dish soap, and toothpicks. Pour some milk into the bowls about an inch or so deep. Then put drops of food coloring into the milk. Make any kind of pattern you want, but don't overdo it. Finally, put some dish soap into a separate bowl. Dip a toothpick into the soap, then touch it into the bowl of milk. Once the milk stops moving, you can repeat touching the toothpick to the soap, then to the milk to make it swirl again. I take it back. This is really cool. Yeah, it's obvious that the soap makes this milk swirl, but why does it swirl? Well, that's a great question. In order to understand that, we're going to need to walk through this experiment step by step. Let's start with the food coloring and why it behaves the way it does. Food coloring is less dense than milk, so the drops of it just float on the milk. But you may notice that the coloring doesn't spread out like it does in water. That's because milk is more than it actually appears to be. It's a combination of mostly water with some sugar, proteins, vitamins, minerals, and fat. The fat helps keep the food coloring from mixing as, if you recall, fats act like oils when combined with water. The two just don't mix. Fat's also very key to the reaction, or more importantly, what we've done to the fat. The problem with the fat in raw milk is as in large globs that will rise up out of the water part of the milk and form a layer of cream on top. This is great for making cream, but makes it hard to transport the milk and keep it milk. So most milk products undergo a process called homogenization. Homogenization is a process that breaks up the fat globules so much that they stay in suspension in the water, keeping your milk as milk. So the key thing to remember about milk is that it has very tiny fat globules suspended in water. And this is what keeps our food coloring from mixing. That is, until we add our dish soap. Because dish soap, like most soaps, is a surfactant. A surfactant is a chemical that has one end that is very attracted to water, and the other end is very attracted to oils and fats. Look at it like this. We know that oil and water don't mix. They separate into two layers. But when we add a surfactant, one end of the molecule is attracted to the water and the other end to the oil. This allows the oil to be mixed into the water. And that's why soaps help us clean. They help mix the oils, grease, and fats into the water so they can be rinsed away. But there's another effect that occurs with surfactants. The surface tension drops. You may remember we talked about surface tension in a prior episode, where the molecules at the surface of a substance are attracted to each other, creating a sort of film or barrier up there. Now, in the case of milk, the water molecules are attracted to other water molecules and the fat molecules are attracted to other fat molecules. But when we add the sur surfactant, the surfactant molecules force some of the water and fats to mix together, decreasing their surface tension. So molecules with stronger attractive forces replace them on the surface to increase the surface tension. That movement carries the food coloring along, causing the colors to mix. This has been another Oh Wow moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play. <laughs>